Welcome back to episode eight of the podcast. In this week's episode, we talk about what's inspired us this week, how important accountability is to us, and the lessons we did not learn in school. This week's Influenced Influencers, and I undertake the TikTok Hot Pickle Challenge. And I did not undertake <laughs> TikTok's Hot Pickle Challenge. Who's the strong one? Not me. Um, as always, thank you so much for listening. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Your views, your words, they mean the world to us. And until next week, enjoy the show. Hi, Phils. Hello. A first full week back at work. Thank God for that. Oh my my kids are still not back to school. Cool. How is that even possible? But, but at least we have a full week in the office. Absolutely. Feeling not so fresh, not going to lie. I'm very coldy, as you can hear, but definitely a little bit zestier in myself. I'm so thrilled for you. Um, how's your week been? Um, it's been great so far. I'm feeling actually very in love with the April vibes. Are you? Yeah. Okay, well, that's quite nice to hear because I'm, I'm going to tell you more about it in a minute. <laughs> Before I actually crack on with what I want to discuss, I have to apologize. Go on. I think I have a very, a not very clear vision of myself. And last week, I completely rinsed you for having a sink full of dishes. <laughs> I'm like looking like, what the earth are you going to say? And I have noticed every single morning I've gone to work and I've left breakfast in the sink. So I just, I just want to <laughs> apologise because I know I absolutely terrorised you for that behaviour. Yeah. And I'm not perfect. And you want to know something funny? I've not had a f- thing in my sink this week. <laughs> So actually, maybe the conversation helped maybe both of us you've been realize. More chilled, and I've been more like less messy. <laughs> okay, but I accept your apology. Thanks. You're welcome. So I actually wanted to discuss with you a little thing that I sent over to Sarah and Nikki over the weekend. It was a post, an Instagram post from Deliciously Ella. And she was celebrating the fact that they have reached 10 years of Deliciously Ella and they are rebranding. And her post on Instagram really hit me because I was just, I'm so inspired by her anyway. I remember when COVID, the first round of COVID hit and I remember her posting about the fact that she'd had to close shop and they were putting a pause on their business. And I thought, wow, for such like an established brand, that's huge to see, but also really amazing that she was honest and open with her community about it. And last week they hit 10 years and she's rebranded. And she did this whole post about like the biggest myth is overnight success. And I just loved all of her words. Um, What was that word that we said when someone's mellifluous? Mellifluous. That one. She just speaks so nicely about her followers, her brand. She lives and breathes it. And I was just so inspired how the myth is there is no overnight success. And I and I love to hear it from her as someone so inspiring. And I think it's really important to hear those messages from those people that really inspire you. Because it's so easy, especially on social media, to think that people don't work hard and they don't put in the effort and they just have this success, like you said, overnight. But actually seeing that journey and hearing that story, the goods and the bad, I think is so inspiring. And also what it teaches us is assuming is the most negative, yeah. dangerous thing you can do. You can never assume anything. And I think what's so great is that she's always been honest about the lows as well as celebrating the highs yeah and I think for someone like us who are building a brand building our own business and I know lots of our readers and followers also the same it's so nice to be able to hear it from someone that's doing so well smashing it but also appreciating it's been hard work Um, But now we're celebrating the good times. And sharing that realistic journey. So another person that I'm really inspired by who I'd like to share today is um, Victoria Prue, who is the founder of Her, the fashion rental app. And she is a Forbes 30 under 30. She always shares like real business stories, how she built her brand. She does amazing Q and A's. And on a Monday morning, she always does her three thoughts of the week. So she takes a video of herself walking and she shares whether it be about work, about personal life, about family life. And I always feel kind of quite inspired by it. So on Monday morning, I shared my three thoughts of the week on Instagram. And it makes you start the week in a really beautiful fashion because you're kind of looking back at things you're excited about or looking forward to things that are happening. And it just 
sets you up for the week. And when you say your three thoughts of the week, are these things that happen potentially the week before that you're grateful for or are you kind of looking forward to the week ahead? I, I didn't take it too seriously because then I start, started to think to myself, is it, is it, like you said, is yes. it behind, is it forward? I thought, yeah. no, I'm just going to put the first three things that went into my head. Yes. One of which I haven't even discussed with you. Are we, can was, we discuss it now? I don't think it's for the, for the pod. My ancestral healing session. How have we not discussed this? I know, I completely forgot. When was this? This was on Sunday night. Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe you never well, told me. Well, I feel like there's a lot going on on Monday. And I felt very overwhelmed and calm from it. Um, I highly recommend to anyone. It's very woo-woo. It's a very deep healing, but a lot of strange things come up. Which Was it on Zoom or in real life? No, in real life with my reflexologist, Rachel. I'll leave all the details below. Very woo-woo. Philip is looking at me like, I'm no, but I wa- fucking healing. I yeah. wanna, no, I want to know more. I'm very <laughs> into that. I'm yes. not, I wouldn't say I practice it as much as Sarah. But you're very intrigued. But I'm very yeah. open to hearing. Definitely. So I need to tell you about that. So that was number one. Number two is that I had a real spring in my step as I woke up in the morning on Monday. I was found it very easy to get out of bed. I had a great workout. I had a great breakfast. More on that later. Mm-hmm. I had a beautiful coffee. I just felt zesty. And the third one was I was really enjoying April. I'd had all of Craig's birthday celebrations. We'd had some amazing milestones hit at work. And I was just feeling in a really good headspace about the month and just what we'd achieved and some exciting things in the next couple of weeks. And I just felt like sharing that. And it was quite a knock-on effect because a few people had done the same and then they tagged me and it was like, oh, a positive just a positive way to start the week and actually really lovely because sometimes subconsciously you might read that from someone else and it might kind of tap onto something that that really brings out positive endorphins on you a little bit like how when I read deliciously Ella I was actually lying in bed full of cold very fluey not feeling my my best self but then I read her post and I all of a sudden felt so inspired and excited so I think key point share the good times share positive messages share also hard times because it makes other people also feel better about themselves so I think sharing is caring ultimately I love that so last weekend I went for my first outside run I think since COVID and I was so shocked about this behavior because normally we tell each other everything (laughs) this is two things I've heard from you this week and all of a sudden I see on Instagram (laughs) Sarah is running and like this is a big milestone as you say you never even told me because I was going with my cousin and Unfortunately, sometimes she's a little bit flaky, so I wasn't convinced it was going to happen. Amanda, I love you, and I know you're not flaky anymore, but it has happened once or twice in the past. Um, But it made me think, had I not have been going with my cousin, there is no way in hell I would have gone for a run by myself outside. Mm -hmm. That accountability of kind of doing that thing that's slightly out of your comfort zone and having someone to do it with you, I think, is is really strong. And it made me think about the fact that we have each other for our mm-hmm. accountability. And we always say we would never be doing what we were doing without each other, right? I think partnership is key in in any form. Um, in, you know, so grateful for our husbands, our mums, each other. Yeah. I think so true with what you say with especially working out you know now I've got my personal trainer I've paid for my block sessions and she's waiting for me yeah and if I let her down I've then ruined her whole schedule so in a way you kind of you feel like you have to go and then once you're there you really enjoy it and it's that the feeling after that you live for so I think you're so right having that other person to that's relying on you kind of gets you motivated keeps you sticking to the plan Um, And you're so right. I mean, especially down to our work, there's been so many times, especially, you know, with the Instagram um, algorithm going up, going down here, there, everywhere. Everything's changing. Social media is such a growing, evolving business. It's so new. We're all learning as we go. A lot of the time it is absolutely exhausting keeping up with it. And so overwhelming. And very overwhelming, yeah. And I feel like, you know, our different strengths, our weaknesses, we're very set on, we've said this before, what one does, what the other does, and we just bring, we kind of are the pieces to the puzzle that, that each other wouldn't have. And I know personally, I just would never be, I would never do this without you. And thanks, beautiful. So I would never do it without you. <laughs> we, no, but it's, true. it's we, true. We we do often say we would never be able to do it without and each when, other. And when, like, when you were away last week, I was falling <laughs> you were apart. Lost, lost without was, me. I was falling apart because when you kind of have those roles that you don't yeah, normally you're do, used to it. it's quite uncomfortable. So having the support of someone else is 
kind of makes us tick. Yeah, but I think also, especially because of our field, you know, we're very kind of, we profile ourselves, we're either videoing ourselves, Absolutely. recording ourselves. So doing that on your own, I think anyone, any of our friends in the kind of social media world that do it on their own, hats, hats off, off to you. Because we could never do that. You've got to be so confident in yourself. Yeah, And we bring out the confidence in each other. And funnily enough, although it's not funny, when you messaged me last night saying that you really weren't feeling well when you were having to go to bed at 8.15, the fear and panic that came to my mind of, am I going to have to do the podcast by myself? <laughs> am I going to have to have a conversation with myself? And I thought, I don't think I could do that. I wouldn't do it to you, yeah. If I but would could be you here do on it? my deathbed. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, no. And the thing is, you can't really sit here on your own and just Many talk people to yourself. Do. You, you just talk like, Loads of people do solo podcasts. I would really struggle with yeah. that. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be really, really tough. I mean, we have kind of got used to the fact of, you know, holding thought on Instagram on our yeah, own. Yeah, but it's not enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a really, you know, nothing, we, we should never take it for granted, yeah. the fact that we have each other to be accountable for. And I think that that was the key message. I received an email this week. I have my 20 year reunion from school. They still do that? Yes. Well, have, did you do a 10-year one? Yes. Did you? Yeah. And you went? Absolutely. I love you for that. And I've never felt more elderly. <laughs> I left school 20 years ago. Listen, unpopular opinion, I loved school. It was the shaping of me. I have the best memories from there. But I read something last week. What were the things you weren't told in school or learnt in school that you think are an important life lesson? So we asked our Instagram, didn't we? We did. I'd like to know what yours is. So you know sometimes something just instantly comes to you and yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, that is actually so, so true. So I only learned this. It was a, one of the lovely nurses after I had my cesarean. Um, without going into too much detail, because I know lots of you potentially are listening to Caveat, this. Caveat, poo story. It's, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just going to be quite, I'll be quick with it. I'm not very f frequent when it comes to the toilet. I am Goes on, on holiday for three days and doesn't do a literally. poo. I'm better now. I take magnesium supplements and they definitely do help. But the nurse told me to, if you are constipated or find it difficult to go, you have to have your knees at 90 degrees and often like lift up your feet. I never knew that. I mean, potentially it's not something you learn at school. Yeah. Maybe that's something my mum never taught me. But same, same. Same, same, but different. I never knew that that was a thing until I was, how old was I, 28 years old. So now I'm picturing you at home <laughs> with your feet up on a block. But I do actually remember mentioning to our, this to our lovely friend, Sasha. Um, if you're listening, Sash, love you. And she said, I, I mean, yeah, I only ever poo with my feet up. Even if she's like in a restaurant, she'll find something yeah. to put her okay. feet on. Um, so, so yeah, that's that yours. Was, what was yours? So mine was actually confirmed by someone that sent in this message I thought was so interesting. Was it the hexagon one? No. Oh, okay. We gotta we gotta what, read that one out. What the labels on clothes mean when you go to wash them. You know like a label on clothes? Yes. How often do you look at something and think like what the f does that one mean? Like this. Even last week I had to Google something. Well, Zara, I mean, look at that. Zara, you... <laughs> I mean, it's there all in Chinese, label. so but God knows. But literally sometimes, oh, the amount of times fair, I've fair put boy. something in the... My beautiful cos trousers that I put in the friggin' washing machine that were dry clean only because I didn't read the thing. Oh, but no, that's, that's because you didn't read it, not because I you know, didn't know. But fine. But what <laughs> I'm saying is, they're all very different. So I think we, there should be a chart and we should learn about... Well, it is well, a lot of people, funnily enough, said chart. how to use the washing machine. Someone actually sent in this quote, which I lulled so much at. I'm so glad I learned about hexagons in school instead of how to do my taxes. It's really handy during hexagon season. I know, and I just thought so, so spot funny. on. And parallelogram season. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. You just, you do learn the most irrelevant things. I'm sure the curriculum has moved on. Yes, because we were talking about this in the office yesterday. How, I mean, I maybe you're different, but I didn't really learn about mental health no feelings, it, well, it, wasn't I mean, it wasn't thing. acceptable it wasn't a thing then yeah. and obviously it is taught now I'm not at school kind of with my kids yet so I can't confirm yes. how it works yeah but I think obviously that's so important that there is space to talk about feelings and red zones and blue zones yes. and all of that I mean at school in Alfie and Ava's school they have mental health awareness day so good they have a day where they all wear odd socks to appreciate everyone's individuality oh, and I love all, that all those little things they are very hot on it sometimes controversially I think maybe um can it be a little bit too much because then it allows for the child to be overly 
um feeling z yeah, yeah. And and I and and I'm not so I I don't actually know what the right or wrong thing is. So I'm sorry if you're listening to that and you're so against what I just said. But I have felt sometimes. I mean, you, you will laugh. Alfie does. He loves it. They after school they do a mindfulness class, which um, I loved the idea of. It's an hour. They do drawing. They do um, sometimes baking. You know, anything that takes their mind off anything else other than being in the present moment. And um, a lot of the time they write down their feelings. I found that sometimes if Alfie, you know, when they start school, they go through all these different emotions and sometimes it's it's irrational. Um, I don't know how to handle it. He doesn't know how to handle it. But then I felt that was him being so aware of his feelings making it a little bit worse? Or was it kind of him expressing himself? Well, does it give him I don't that know. space that otherwise he would internalise it? Yes. So I think yeah. it's a valid point. I think there's no perfect balance. Yeah. Um, and we're just learning as we're going along. But I think it's so important that the children are learning how to express themselves. Um, but I also am also a little bit cautious. Do we need to sometimes... Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm still learning as I'm going. Okay, I think that's, that's just fair. my feeling towards it. Um, the overall riding um, pointers were, though, tax, saving, yeah. mortgage, all those things that are real life things yes. that you actually don't you don't have the friggin' clue yeah. about. Yeah. So yeah, that, was, that was what came up a lot. Also, um, this was quite interesting. Not about how to not get pregnant, but how to get pregnant about your windows, your ovulation, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. What I thought was quite interesting. I mean, I vaguely remember learning about that in biology, but obviously in, in sex education, mm -hmm. which made me laugh for some reason. <laughs> that was like when we were laughing in the office yesterday when someone said that they were from Nuneaton. <laughs> Nuneaton. If you're from Nuneaton, I like, mean, legend. Literally legend. Um, <laughs> also, how to write a CV. That is a good one. And again, I they feel might... like I definitely learned that at school. Did you not? Oh, I don't remember. I definitely did. Well, apparently a lot of people didn't. I um, mean, but also to caveat that, do you have a CV? No. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because I guess we've now just, we've just, we, we've had a very strange career where we started our first job, which just rolled into what we, into what we did now. So we've never had to do a CV. But I think also for our field, your Instagram, your TikTok, and that's really your CV. funny because I was giving someone some advice um, the other day, and they're a really talented writer and they want to get into kind of fashion journalism and stuff like that. But their Instagram page was quite non existent. And I said to her, You need that is your profile, that is where people find out the real you. They want to see who you are, what you do, what you're interested in. Yeah. Because if someone came into our office to yeah. interview, what would the first thing you do We'd be? Check their, their Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. So That's that is CV. your CV. So how times have changed. One other thing that came up a lot, how to change a tire. Even if I knew I mean, how I to do that, no idea. even if I knew how to do that, <laughs> I don't think I'd do it. No, it's it, true. But I will say, I feel like Craig at school learned like a few more of like life hacky skills. I don't know if that was a boy thing back in those days, like about changing a plug or things like that stuff that I just would never be able to or do. Or perhaps we learnt it, but it just went. Whoosh, yeah, maybe with right the parallelograms. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it's true because I guess you just the curriculum says what it says, and you just go along with it. But then, as and there are certain things you have to learn for yourself. I mean, for me, I should have learned how to go to the toilet properly. Yeah. And there's things like life lessons that you can't teach them at school. One thing they definitely do learn at school is nutrition. And that leads us on to what does one have for breakfast? This is something I'm favorite obsessed topic. With. As you guys know, we love learning about everyone's routines, down to gym routine, morning routine, evening routine. How we're doing our routine all wrong. Yeah. Our makeup routine. Everything. Our hair routine. Love a routine. And the last couple of weeks, I've been obsessed learning about everyone's breakfast routine. I've, I go through ups and downs. Sometimes I'll just grab a banana, a coffee. That is the worst breakfast you could ever have. Terrible. Because it spikes your sugar. You'll yeah. be hungry five minutes later and it's not enough for breakfast. So you Went into a bit of a Weetabix little zone, um, porridge. I just love knowing what everyone has for breakfast. And I've seen there's a huge TikTok trend at the moment. And if we're not doing it, who are not living are life? Are you doing it? Scrambled oats. Have you done it? Nope. You're not living life. I want to try though. Report and back. so it's oats, egg, 
you can do like mashed banana, cinnamon, a little bit of yogurt. You literally just whack it in a pan, scramble it. Put it on your plate. So it's a set, it's, it is essentially a, a pancake. deconstructed pancake. Absolutely. A deconstructed pancake, stroke scrambled oats type of breakfast. But if an eaten mess can be a scrambled pavlova. Yeah, there you why go. Why can't scrambled okay. eggs be a, scrambled oats be a thing? Sound really nice. I'm going to try it. I think I might do it with some berries on the side yeah. and maybe a little bit of um, Greek You're going to whip up a compote? Definitely not. <laughs> no one's got time for that. What do you have for breakfast? I was going through my yogurt fruit um, phase. What kind of yogurt? I always have the protein yogurts. People probably shout at me they're not very good, but I quite like them because after a workout. But today you're going to be really freaked out by this. What do you have? Smoothie. No. Nope. No. Boiled eggs. On their own? No, with a piece of toast. Did you put like butter on your toast? No, because I just was very, very quick. It must have been very dry. No, but it's, that's how I like it. Interesting. Because I had boiled eggs in the fridge mm-hmm. and I thought, I'm quite hungry this morning. So you had just had dry toast? With the eggs on top. But didn't they fall Slice off? Slice them. Just got them in my gob quickly. <laughs> um, and I'm, I enjoyed it. Talking actually of yogurt, I do recommend if you are a yogurty, granolary, vibey person, the Bio and Me, which is full of fear, good, ba- good, good bacteria. bacteria, feeding your gut. I think that's the main thing in the morning. We need to feed our gut with good things. And actually, I know I'm mentioning deliciously Ella again, but I then went on a rabbit hole down her feed and she said, if you do one good thing this week, prep your breakfast the night before to have a healthy week or day ahead. Another question on the breakfast front, because when I was away a couple of weeks ago, I, I'm always fascinated. Do you do this at the buffet? I like look to see what everyone's having. Oh, yeah. Everyone seems to have omelettes. Craig likes an omelette. Every, I kept but seeing But my pet peeve with an omelette, I don't want to wait, stand there for six minutes no, waiting for my omelette. There were two omelette stations. But you're in a queue, you're then waiting. Yeah. Everyone's finished by the time you get back to the table. And also, and then I want to know admin. what everyone has in the omelette. What would you have in an omelette? So I did have it one day. I had um, tomato, Ooh, cheese, no. and mushroom. Tony, you're not even a cheese lover. Can I just say? No, like a mild cheese. I don't like cheesy cheese. <laughs> we were having a conversation the other day with our photographer Zoe, and she said cheese is the glue that holds her life together. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's so genius. And I was like, che- cheese for me is like, I really, from a baby bell to like a cheddar and a cracker, like I just, it's, I very much enjoy it whereas you were like I like cheese and that <laughs> was quite disturbing for me because you can't just say oh I like cheese like oh I like no I'm not a, a hater drink. of cheese I like like a mozzarella a brie like a creamy you're not mild like, I don't you're I not couldn't like, take a chunk of a cheddar piece you've like, never gone to the fridge taken a no. slice of cheddar and eaten it I'd have a baby bell no no a slice of cheddar you've never cut a piece of no. cheddar cheese no that's sorry. Free. That's sorry. really bizarre. <laughs> I haven't. I actually, when I was pregnant with Alfie, I, my favorite thing to eat was cheese all day long. So I can appreciate, you can appreciate it. your enthusiasm for it. But yeah, sorry. I um, I okay. like it. I just I, don't love you're, it. Fine, okay, I take that on board. Um, so you had an omelette with cheese and tomato. I did try it. Um, but yeah, that was my favorite thing in the morning to look to see what everyone else was having. I always do get quite envious of the people that pile up the croissants and the Nutella. And it's always my last day thing. Yeah. Also, I would feel, if I ate that every day for us, I'd actually feel grim. And then just to continue one more chat yeah. about the breakfast thing. Many a time did I then take the croissant, the um, loafs, all the beautiful pastries in a d- bag. In a bag and took them down to the pool with me. Moving on to influenced influencers. Sarah, have you been influenced this week? So, I saw this product on TikTok on Hayley, Hayley Bieber spoke about it. She said it made her feel super beautiful. Of course she did. So, in a bid to feel super beautiful myself, I logged on to Boots to buy the Dior backstage blusher in color rosy glow it's very pink it's very pink but what it does it gives you that natural flush so Hayley Bieber what she does is because she's so glowy and gorgeous she just puts a tiny bit on with no other makeup whereas I used it to give a flush on top of the blusher that wasn't quite doing its job properly because I don't look like a glowy queen yes you do did you put a little bit on the tip of your nose 
I act just on the, here. Oh, no. Here. no. What? That's what Mary Phillips says to do. Here, here, if here. If you put it there, then you're going to look like you've got a no, bruise. No, because it's like... Here, that's where you look like cold no, and flushed. No, it makes you look... Um, no, that's what she says to do. Oh, okay, got it wrong. Well, I think there's two ways. Some people say put your blusher up. Some people put your blusher on your rosy bits of your cheeks. This is true. Um, so although it looks very pink, I really like it. And actually on holiday, I imagine when you aren't really wearing makeup and you just want a bit of glow in the daytime, it's quite good as well. Nice one. I like it. What's the colour? It's called Rosy Glow. Rosy Glow. There you go. Thanks, Hayley Bieber. That rhymes. Um, so Nadia Anya, once again, she has inspired me. She You're inspired me fan. with my um, towel cuffs a couple of weeks ago, I saw that she Instagrammed on her Ocado delivery, she had ordered the new, brand new M&S redesigned packaging detergent and um, fabric softener. This is something I am V this obsessed so with. You. I love good smelling people, fresh smelling clothes. There's nothing better. I've been known to be in a queue wherever I am. And if someone smells beautiful in front of me, I will say, what colour Lenore do you use? Yes. Like that's I, I'm just obsessed with knowing what 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 kind of combos everyone uses. Do you use fairy? My friend told me she uses Daz. Daz? Daz. I didn't even know that still exists. She said Daz is the one. I'm a white comfort girl through and through. My yes. muzzy smells so beautiful yes. with white comfort. I agree. So anyway, I was totally inspired and influenced. Oh, the packaging's delightful. Look at that beautiful packaging. What I will say is it's quite Can I heavy flow when it comes out. Oh. So they have not quite, use the Can you see? They need a nozzle. But do you not pour it into the lip? I tried Can that. I smell it? Yeah. So it is very beautiful. One thing I, I will say. The ribbed bottle. Yes. It's very snazzy. And also it was really Ooh. affordable. It's nice. It smells like a hotel. Yeah. It's very luxe. Delightful. One thing I will say is it was very reasonable. Considering the size of it, it was, um, I thought it was going to cost like 20 quid and it wasn't. I think it was like three pounds something. The other thing I will say, I do did really like the smell. It's quite a sophisticated yeah. smell and I do quite like Alfie and Ava smelling like babies still. So I think I'll use it for like my towels and my sheets. sheets. Yeah. Um, but everything else I'm sticking to. Lenore that is a great Compton. find. Thanks, Nadia. And there we go. Finally, I've got a uh -oh. challenge for Where you. Oh, gosh. We've been meaning to do this challenge for so long. So James, our pop producer, bought Philippa a gift, a hot pickle. Because Philippa likes spicy things. She I likes pickles, I love pickles. And she is convinced that she'll be able to neck this in one. Absolutely <laughs> have I never said such a thing. Look at the girth of it for, to start with. She's going to neck it in one and, and shot the juice. Can you imagine? <laughs> literally gonna be sick so I actually, if you gag i'm gonna vomit because i can't bear like i can't you know that noise of someone being sick i can't take it so if you you're gonna have to not do that because otherwise really we're gonna be in big trouble really really hard i'm quite, I'm, I'm, to know your I'm method. quite a gagger but. <laughs> i need to know your method as to what you're gonna do all i'm gonna say is i'm just gonna i'm gonna try so let's it. explain to people that aren't watching what it is it's it, it was trending on tiktok of yes what's it's it called? just called a hot and spicy flavor hot pickle and it's very girthy. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go, guys. As I Sarah it, said, I uh, love pickles. Careful of your white jacket. Should I take it off? Potentially. Because I have seen that people have said it's very juicy. <laughs> right, here we go. Wait, I need to like film you doing this as well. I'm I'm not going to go in for the juice. Sorry to upset people, but I'm just going to... I was actually supposed to bring a shot glass for you. And I'm going to also let you guys know that it's currently Wednesday morning at nine o'clock or something ridiculously early that i'm having this hot and spicy pickle TikTok philippa ross Look is about at the to size of do it. a girthy pickle challenge oh my god i have to say this looks so good oh it's it it's it does it smell nice it smells spicy you can't just nibble it go in i can't like it Oh wow. Is it spicy? No. Is it good? That is epic. That is so good. Are you going in for another bite? And I've got a cold, so it's like clearing my sinuses at the same time. Oh wow, she's going in for round two. Oh my god. That is heaven. Go on, eat the whole thing. No, we sick. Oh my god, guys, that is so good. Well, not much of a f challenge then. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. I apologise. I should have done the pickle. That's something I can't do. Will you try it? My eyelids will fall The other off. end. It's not that spicy. Mm. Sarah Ellis, 
if I Let's throw up. Let's see how tough you are. I don't like really spicy foods. The smell. I, I it's can't. It's so I can't good. The smell. I could go for more. I don't think I can. Oh, it's heaven. Do go I on. Have, please don't make me. Grow some balls. Come on. Do it. Do it. Oh my God, the smell is repulsive. It's stunning. I love it. Oh, I you didn't even do it. I'm going to vomit. Shame on you. Loving that. I'm sorry. Terrible challenge. Terrible challenge. I nearly gagged. She enjoyed it. So the moral it. of the story is, James, don't buy us another challenge. <laughs> Leave them to me. So after a slightly different challenge than we had anticipated, <laughs> because you enjoyed Didn't the challenge. to love it. Because a challenge may be supposed to be... It's quite difficult. Yeah. Difficult or entertaining or not just the most delicious thing you've ever tasted. I have to say, my mouth is now on fire, but I enjoy, enjoy that, that feeling. Okay. So... So spicy lovers, go get the pickle. Um, I feel like you've got a nice quote you'd like to share I for do. the end of the show. Our dear friend Jessica Albert, as lots we, of you our, know. Our relationship has fizzled out slightly. We do, we do kind of still we stay do in like touch. here, like there, but the love is the not DMs as, have, the love is not as strong. It's not. But I saw that she posted a really lovely quote that she was reading one of her books. Um, I actually can't see the title of the book. It just says healing at the top. So perhaps that is the title. Um, but it really rung true to me. So I wanted to end today's episode on this lovely little note just to reconfirm any thoughts that perhaps you have um, and just kind of end on a high, basically. And she wrote a nice little reminder. Maturity is when you can finally ride the ups and the downs of life without getting tossed around by them. You don't expect everything to be perfect. You know change is a constant. You don't judge yourself when times get hard. You live in gratitude. You enjoy the good when it is here. That gave me goosebumps. I loved that. It kind of says everything you ever want to say in one. Yeah. I think that that was just the perfect way to sum up episode eight. We are on episode eight, guys. Loving it, living it, dreaming it. And Pickling it. <laughs> mouth is still definitely on fire. But over and out from us, we hope you've enjoyed our episode. As always, please like, subscribe, follow. We are on Instagram, Twinset Unzipped, so please give us a follow. And don't forget, at what the brand at We Are Twinset as well. We have a cheeky little discount for you for those listening to the show for the brand. So check it out in the notes below. And thank you for listening. See you next week. Bye.